Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Confounded Chronicles. So, in this episode, uh, we got a bunch of new tools for the shop, got some tumblers, got my Tormach tool system in, uh, changed the layout of the shop a little bit, and uh, I don't know, that's about it. So let's get into it. So the first thing I did is, uh, well, something I alluded to last year, I was doing, or not last, no, technically last year, uh, was just moving the equipment around the shop. I moved the mill in the corner, got the uh, plastic curtain around it. Doesn't look exactly how I want it to look, but it's going to serve its purpose just fine of keeping the mess contained. Uh, the main thing for that mill now is the... That stuff. The Tormach tool system came in, um, which is awesome. It is so nice to use. Uh, so basically, I mean, most people watching my channel probably kind of have an idea what that system is. Uh, super quick overview. It's an R8 taper that goes inside your mill, whatever kind of mill you have. Um, that's ground down a little bit so that when the tool holders go in, which are essentially little adapters that Tormach makes, uh, it pulls it in and it kind of registers it against the spindle. Um, so it gives you a little bit of rigidity, even though it's increasing the length of the tool holding. Uh, and what that does is it basically lets you set a bunch of tools offline, uh, measure them up to your, your offsets you need, whatever, and then quick swap them in uh, while the program is running without having to take out a taper every time. So even though I don't have a power drawbar, that's going to be hugely beneficial to me. The next thing I wanted to do was organize the tool system so that I didn't have them laying everywhere. My old tapers were just like laying on a table on a big cloth, and it, it's so annoying to try to find. You're just wasting time switching tools, and it's does zero for my productivity. So what I did is uh, 3D printed these little holders. And basically these are some Thingiverse, uh, some guy designed them. I'll link it in the description below if you wanna go download your own and print them. Uh, it's just a three quarter inch hole that accepts the little uh, taper for the Tormach tool system. This one was specifically designed for Tormach. Uh, you got an extra hole there for an end mill or something, whatever you wanted to put. Um, and these all just dovetail together on either side and you can just mount them to a wall or I mounted mine to, to a piece of plywood and it'll hold up 10 holders. I'm still printing a few more um, and that should take care of my needs for the pens and for the dice. I kind of laid out the tools I'm going to need in my head and I think between 5 and 10 tools uh, should cover me for all those purposes and uh, it makes a nice neat organized way to keep my tools in line. The next choice I had to make when going with the system was the collet system I wanted to use. Uh, for larger end mills, I don't, I rarely use like half inch sized end mills. Um, if I do they're for like big roughing operations. So I got a set screw holder uh, after watching NYC CNC's video, I'll link it up there, uh, about how much the tools actually get pushed offline uh, from a set screw holder. I, 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 initially I was concerned that they wouldn't be very concentric, but they're, they're more than concentric enough for my purposes. So I bought uh, one of those right now and that's just going to hold my indicator. Um, eventually I'll buy a few more just to hold roughers and whatnot. Um, and then for the call system, I decided to go with the ER16 system. The reason with a 16 as opposed to a 20 or a 32 is a uh, 32 is just massively large and it's hard to get air blast under it. Um, 20, same thing. I didn't need what 20 would like. I'm three eighths is probably the biggest end mill I'm going to use for most of my purposes. Um, honestly, most of my end mills are going to be quarter inch, one eighth um, and in that size. So 16 was more than ample. Uh, gave me a really small nose on the uh, end of the collet nut. So it's easy to get air blast around it or coolant or whatnot. And uh, they're a little bit cheaper than 32 collet. So, or a 32 size one, so I, I, I just went with 16s. So the other upgrade I made to the mill uh, is I went ahead and bought the G Wizard license. I bought a one year license for the wattage of my mill. That basically gives me a lifetime license um, because it's only, it's, it's less than a horsepower. Um, and that's just gonna optimize my time. My time is my only commodity that I really can't control. It's constantly going out the window. And I think this is something that's really gonna help me um, balance out chip loads. I've used G-Wizard in the past uh, on CNC routers and on a big gantry CNC router I run um, for my day job, but it doesn't, <laughs> cat's trying to get in, uh, it doesn't much matter. It, when you don't have the rigidity of a mill, I find that chip load is a little bit more of something you can kind of skate by with just sound and uh, and how the cut is, is operating. Uh, when you get to a mill, it's a little more rigid. You're running a lot lower RPMs, or in my case, I'm running a lot lower RPMs, and you're cutting a lot or much more hard materials, you're cutting steels and, and uh, more difficult materials to work with, chip load seems to play a much bigger factor. And it's the one thing that's basically going to drive my time. If I have my chip load incorrectly and it's too slow, I'm just wasting time. And uh, so anyways, for the price, very inexpensive. And like I said, it's lifetime for hobby use because uh, the wattage of my system just makes it so. So honestly, I don't have any affiliation with G Wizard or anything. I just think it's cool software. And uh, that's something that makes my life easy. So that's a win too. 
Another change we made to the shop is I basically moved the computer that controls the mill and the CNC router. I moved it up to give myself a little extra space because I tied on it as always and I want to optimize it. So uh, I moved the monitor and the keyboard up on a little shelf and underneath of there I uh, put two tumblers. Uh, initially I wanted to go with um, rotor, rotary tumblers. The one I want is like $600 and it's just that's a little bit steep for right now. I could spend that $600 on other things that will be better for me or optimize my time better. So uh, I decided to try vibratory tumblers. These two tumblers that I got are, uh, I think they were $70 each Canadian, so they're very inexpensive. Um, so I got these two, I bought two of them for basically, so I could dedicate one to soft materials and one to hard materials. I want to dedicate one to stainless and, and harder materials in the future, going uh, on harder materials that I'll use in the future. And I dedicate one to brass and bronzes and coppers and whatnot, and softer materials. So I can change the media or not have to change the media. have each one have set up with its own media. Media, that's another thing. It seems like a dark art. Uh, some people have used those Eastwood's pier Eastwood pyramids, which are like little synthetic plastic things with silica sand embedded in it. I don't think it's going to work for my purpose, just judging on other people's experience using it in aluminum and stuff. It just, I, I want it for steel and I want it to basically stone wash the finish um, on my pens and on my pocket clips. So I figured if I'm going to try stone washing, I may as well try stones first. <laughs> so what I did is I basically just bought some pea gravel, some like aquarium gravel, and, uh, and just tried that to see how that's going to work. So, so this is the clip basically right off the mill. It, uh, it's just mill finish and then it's kind of got slightly sharp edges just because it was, it was milled without any corner chamfer or anything on there. It's like with my jig, I can't get my chamfering tool in there. Um, so it, like there's nothing wrong with it. I quite like it. I just want a stone wash finish. So what I did is I took the, another clip and popped it in the tumbler for, I think this one tumbled for four hours. And, uh, all it did was basically just mat that finish out gave me a nice stone wash look. It didn't run out the uh, engraving or didn't rub out the engraving or anything like that. Um, and it just, I wouldn't even say it rounded the corners on this clip, it just took any of the sharp edges off it. So it has a much nicer feel, slides into your pocket a lot easier. And I didn't have to do any hand finishing and that's the main reason I bought the tumblers because now I can cut all these, pop them in the tumbler, let it go and and it's done. I can pull the parts out and clean them and I don't have to do any hand finishing. And hand finishing is annoying because it takes a lot of time and uh, there's no reason I need to do it when we have things like this. The last change I made to this pen, uh, and basically I'm I'm almost satisfied. There's a couple things I'm not quite satisfied with. Um, I'll go over those in a second. Um, but the one thing that was bugging me is on this pen, the spring is located in the uh, tail of the pen, which pushes the ink cartridge forward uh, against this little tip. I did that for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it was easy, <laughs> and I've done it in the past on my Mark 1s, and it's worked well. Um, and two, it basically only meant that I had to tolerance this part. If I messed up any tolerances on these parts, like on the cap or on the body, if they were too long or too short, it wouldn't really matter because the spring takes up all the uh, extra space in the rear and it pushes the ink forward against this. So it only registers against this bore on the inside uh, and that dictates how far the pen sticks out. That's hacky. I don't, I don't know. It's It works just fine. Um, it just in my opinion, it's kind of a hacky way to go about it. And when I go to the bolt action of this, I'm gonna to have to move the spring to the front anyways, so I may as well do it now um, and get it out of the way so so that it's one less thing to change in the future. So what we did is we moved the pen, or moved the spring from the rear to the front of the pen, which uh, makes assembly a little bit easier because you're not fighting this screw cap against a spring, it's kind of just pressing against the back of the pen. Um, that also lets this uh, screw cap, once it's fully screwed in, it dictates how far the pen sticks out which also means that the tolerance stack up or the um, inaccuracies in machining now stack up. So if this is threaded incorrectly and the body is too long and the tip cap is a different length, it's gonna affect how far the pen sticks out. It doesn't seem to be an issue because my tolerance on this is like plus minus five thou. Uh, it's like a 10 thou difference in how much the pen sticks out, which is fairly easy to hold. That's not a very tight tolerance. So it uh, doesn't seem to be an issue. So I swapped the swings around. Um, obviously I didn't CAD first. And the funny thing is it almost lined up perfectly. The only thing I had to modify was the length of this tail cap to set my new stick out, but um, that was it. So it's like it wanted to be built that way. So that was kind of cool. Sometimes you win them. The one last thing I'm chasing down on this pen is uh, this pocket clip. It's just, little fuzzies on it. Uh, it's just a little bit more, like if you pull on this, you can start bending it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to correct that with material changes. Um, I don't know if going thicker is going to help. Um, 
I don't know. This is, I think, 3, 3 or 4, 316. I have to check because it's plate stock, so I'm not entirely sure which one this is. I don't know if changing the grade of stainless is going to help anything. I don't know if uh, stainless work hardens when I bend it. I cold bend it, so I don't know if that's impacting anything. It's something i got to look into a little bit. It's not a huge issue. Um, like I said, I've been carrying this one for a month, and it hasn't become an issue. It becomes an issue when I get it caught on something, like walking on a corner and it pull on it. Um, but it, in day-to-day -day use, it doesn't really cause any problems. Any pen would do that, but I don't know. Just something I want to look into and see if I can uh, find a better or a better material for this um, that I can actually get. Some of these fancy pants materials, it's much more difficult to get though. I can still get them, it just drives the price up significantly. So anyway, that's another thing I'm fighting with. And uh, that's that's basically the last of the pen or the last bits of the pen that I kind of have slight issue with and then, and then I'm happy with the design. So that encompasses basically what I've got up to this week. Uh, now it's just to jump into fuzzy in my eyeball. So that encompasses this week. Uh, next week is just gonna be straight production, which is awesome because that's something I love to do. I love to build things. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Take care, bye.